So the moment he said that, then many, we they call the celestial beings, heard this, what Buddha kind of almost stopped the teaching. And that thing is a, such a great loss if Buddha not teach. So in this way, from celestial beings came with the conscience and the will of Dharma uh, to Buddha and offer, please turn the will of Dharma. So when they request to turn the will of Dharma, then Buddha realized now it's the time to turn the will of Dharma. So that's the reason the Buddha teach. Yeah. So then Buddha taught like a five, or like sorry, four uh, noble truth at the Saranath. So Saranath is also a very holy place in the Buddhism because every Buddha after they reach enlightenment in the Bodh Gaya, they're going to turn the will of Dharma and Saranath. So this is all future like 996 Buddha also going to go in the Saranath and the Tan village. So geographically it's so important this place. So no accidentally Buddha choose enlightenment and Bodh Gaya. No accidentally Buddha went in Saranath keep teaching because geographically when you teach, like I mentioned yesterday, uh, this morning we took precepts. reason we took is a special day, full moon day. Full moon is like our emotions much stronger. When you have a strong emotion, that day, whatever you do, good or bad, is more effective. So similarly, geographically, if you teach some location, it's more beneficial for the entire world than uh, teaching some un- uh, kind of a special place. So geographically, somehow, when you teach that place, much easier to kind of uh, split the Dharma everywhere. So that's the reason they have a, such a specific energy in that place. That's the reason they, they specifically choose their place to, to teach Dharma. So that's a second condition. Yeah? And then the uh, third one is like, a, uh, even Buddha taught, his teaching is not going to be last forever. Sooner or later, it going to end up, finish. So, so this Buddha's teaching, the length, they say, like 5,000 years. After 5,000 years, people no interest. When they no interest, then teachings will disappear in this world. So that's the reason we say like a teaching is not just physical, kind of someone wearing robes. You know, someone kind of buying lots of books. Teaching is like a, the voice that really someone who has a knowledge and then knowledge to deliver it to someone else. So that can benefit. That's the most important <clears throat> Buddhist teaching, Buddhist, yeah. So in this way, well, anyway, <clears throat> uh, the teaching is uh, last only five thousand. So now half of them gone. So the remaining is half. So so sometimes people concern. Oh, if a teaching run, then where we can practice continues. We concern that some people. What we're saying, like uh, someone who already connected, practicing it, no break away from the Dharma. This. Because Buddha not stop teaching, like we not talk about only just this universe, there's a countless universe. So Buddha may disappear Dharma in this world, but somewhere else he's still teaching. So Buddha's teaching is like a sun. When we get dark in this part of the planet, no means the sun will disappear. Sun is still shining in another part of the world, not different than this. Right now we see the sun very bright here, another part of the world is totally dark. So that dark continent, no, it seems like a sunset disappear, but not the sun still here. So same like a Buddha teaching never kind of disappear, but due to different location, disappear certain time. Yeah. So in this way, someone who already in the Dharma, then always opportunity here. But someone who never reached Dharma, then there are no opportunity. They're connecting in that period of time. So in that way, we are fortunate. Still, the teaching is remaining. Yeah, the third one. Uh, then fourth is like a, uh, how long the teaching of the Buddha is going to remain is not up to the Buddha. It's entirely up to the followers. As long as the followers there, teaching is going to remain. When there's no follower, then teaching is never going to come. So in that way, at the moment, we are so fortunate, we are still there as a follower. We, you know, we follow the teaching of the Buddha. So that's the fourth one. And then fifth, like a, we call the benefactor, sponsors, this is. Because uh, 
if there's no benefactor or sponsor, then how to run the teaching? Yeah. So because everyone kind of contributing, their contribution uh, creating the condition to possible to run such as a retreat, such as run the teaching, such as run the kind of meditation. If no one have interest to contribute, then uh, nothing to run. So that's re- we're still fortunate people willing to contribute to organize different meditation, different retreat, different things. So, so these five we need to have uh, outer conditions. So when you got all this uh, inner self condition, outer the condition, then when you got all these eighteen things in your life, that time you are precious in mirror. You are perfect conditioned vehicle. You are so highly sophisticated technology. So now is this technology you should use to cross this ocean of samsara. Yeah? And normally it's saying like uh, we kind of so much amazed about new technology when we talk about the NASA's space shelter. Yeah, spends the billions of dollars. We think it's so high technology. But if you really think about our human technology and NASA's the space shelter, if you really compare our human technology far more advanced than that one. Because that no matter how good technology only can reach as far as Mars. What's the point there? Only red sense. You should go to the Alice Spring, you know, you have a plenty of red sense there. You know? So this human, this sophisticated high tech, if you use, can reach the enlightenment. You know? So we actually we have a, such a more sophisticated high tech than the NASA built, but we're not surprised ourselves. We surprise some piece of technology. You know? So in this way we need to really value ourselves so important. Mostly we don't value ourselves. That's the reason we so much negative ourselves. That leads us to suffering. Unnecessary we make a we that's the answer like we human we're contradicting, you know, on one hand we want to be happy, we want to be peace. But who stop us not to be happy, not to be peace is ourselves. We constantly destroy ourselves. But we don't realize that. We always blaming someone else. That you stop in my peace, you kind of cause up to my none of them has the power. You know? Only person who has the power to disturb you is yourself. So therefore we should be uh, be more positive. <coughs> so positive thoughts and positive mind is the best protector. If you have this one, no one can disturb you. Shantideva you know? obviously many of you did study Shantideva. Shantideva says, like, uh, entire world become your enemy, they cannot make you in hell. But they only can take your life. But only thing that make you hell is your own negative mind. You know? For instance, like I say, like, uh, the whole ocean cannot, help, cannot do the sink in the ship. Yeah? No matter how much water that they cannot make the, the ship to sink. The moment the ship get hole, get water into it, then it's going to sink. So same like a, your mind got hold, become negative, they're going to sink. If your mind is positive, no matter how negative are there, no one can make you miserable. Yeah? So this reason is so important. That's the reason we need to train our mind. If you keep training your mind, mind is a possible to develop completely positive. Once you're completely positive, whatever negative comes to you, it becomes more positive to you. Like I say, like we talk about compassion. You know? Compassion is not just come when someone's happy. Compassion is not going to come when someone's at peace. Compassion only comes when someone's miserable, someone's unhappy. So when you see this all this negativity around you become like a fume to increase your flame of compassion. You know? So in this way, if you have a really such a wisdom and a positive mind, nothing is negative out there. Every negative turns into positive to you. But when you have a negative mind, even there's a positive out there, everything turns into negative. So really, 
what is going to be to you positive and negative is your state of mind. You know? So therefore it's worthwhile to train our mind to be positive. You know? So these are, we've talked about the 18 uh, prerequisites. Like if you've got all these 18 qualities, then you're perfect life to practice Dharma. If you miss one of these 18, then you're not still perfected. So you need to uh, collect this remaining whatever you not have, you just collect, make them perfect. Like a, I mentioned, like a space shelter, you need to be every piece of technology. If you miss one technology, it become like a stop the, the kind of a flight to the destination. You know? So every kind of a single that uh, technology is a part of a, to success the journey space shelter to reach the moon or space. So similarly, every 18 is a complete technology to reach the Buddhahood, you know. So if you miss one, you can't. So that's the reason we have to... These are the very worthwhile meditation, like, a, like, a, like a, what we meditation is like, we reciting, researching ourselves. So then we know much better than oneself. Only person who knows perfectly yourself is yourself. No one else knows that. So once you know very well yourself, then you know how to handle yourself, how to rescue yourself, how to protect yourself. So that's really, these are the very important to meditate, uh, like uh, these 18 prerequisites. So that's how uh, we completed the preliminary, uh, the, we say, uh, no attach to this life. Because the attachment, like I said, this life is like a dew drop. Yeah, dew drop means like a morning in the winter you see it's like a frost, like a white, but it not last long. So life, that's, this life is like only temporary, we never know how long we're going to live. So if you put so much effort to circle this life, then one day we die, everything that we put to gain this life, we can't take with us. Have to leave everything behind. So almost like you die with empty handed. Because the, why we get empty handed, we are so attached for this life. You know? But sometimes we know saying you should not enjoy, you should be miserable and then practice. Miserable is not going to be doing a good practice. You need to be enjoy but without attachment. Attachment, enjoyment is separate, but we make it the one. But the reality is separate. Enjoyment is enjoyment, you just enjoy every moment. Say, I'm so fortunate to be human. I'm so fortunate to have this opportunity to practice. Just enjoy it, but you don't grasp on it. Because grasping is something permanent, it's worthwhile to grasp it. But because it's impermanent, when you grasp, then you lose it, you get disappointed. You know? So that's the reason we say, like, uh, losing is not the disappointing us. We're expecting it's going to be the same, that make us disappointed. So that's the reason Dharma said, like, uh, attachment, create this expectation. You know? So that's the reason we say saying like, uh, you should get rid of the expectation, but we're not saying you get rid of the enjoyment. I mean, if you get rid of the enjoyment, then what's the point? Back to Dharma. You know? Dharma is supposed to bring us joy, happiness. Now you're talking about it to abandon this joy and happiness. That's not contradicting. No, we're not saying like, uh, to abandon joy and happiness, but you expect you know, abandon the clinging of mind. Because clinging that kind of a, kind of a strikes you, not letting to kind of progress. You're not letting move forward. So that clinging, like why we caught up in samsara? Because it's a clinging. Because clinging, we're stuck here. So the moment you free this clinging, then we're free to move forward. Yeah. Okay, so we stop here.